This is Travis with Siler Instrument, and we're uh, going to show you how to post-process with the WISCOR system uh, because we've got all the Opus uh, base stations down. Um, or I'm sorry, the NGS base stations are, are not recording any data, making that accessible to us. We're going to show you how to use the uh, Wisconsin system here. Um, so what I've got right now in Pathfinder Office is a, a single SSF file with some data uh, that was just collected uh, uh, locally here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, get a bit, little bit of information off of that. So first of all, I want to know when I first started collecting data. So if you open up your file on your feature properties, you can click on first here, and I can see October 3rd at uh, 3.34 is when the, the file was started. Um, so what I want to do is actually round down uh, on the hour there. So I'm going to go ahead and say 3 o'clock. Uh, now I also want to know when uh, or how long my file was. So I'm going to click on the last point here and I'm going to say uh, take a look there and see okay 4 o'clock p.m. I'm going to round up so if it was 3.59 I'd round up to 4 but because it, it's at 4 I'm going to go ahead and round up to 5. So I uh, log data from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock or, or I'm going to provide the information that I log data from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock so that's a, a two hour duration there. You also do want to check here uh, if you weren't the one collecting the data, uh, somebody else was, you may want to check to make sure that uh, um, you know you, you have the times correct here. So uh, just go ahead and uh, go up to options and time zone settings and uh, just make sure that that's the case. Uh, so central day is from March to November. Uh, November to March is uh, going to be the, the standard time. So just a little, little bit of a reminder there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop over to Wiscores here, uh, or the, the Internet Explorer, and, and go to wiscores.dot.wi.gov. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and uh, click on the Wiscores web server on the left side here. All right, so uh, sometimes it takes a minute or two to open. Uh, you should see if you have a username and password. If not, you'll have to request one from the, the service there. Um, but uh, once you've logged in, you should see Reference Data Shop on the left side here. If you don't have it, uh, if you see a bunch of other stuff here but no Reference Data Shop, then what you're going to want to do is uh, send off an email to the uh, WISCOR's uh, administration team and request for access to that. By default, they don't provide that. They just provide uh, access to the real-time uh, services. So just uh, request that if you don't have it there. So going to the reference data shop here, uh, we're going to go ahead and start a new order. And we're going to pick cores in this case. All right, so I'm going to pick the base station closest to me here. Uh, that would be SHON in this case. If I click on the triangle representing that, that reference station, it's going to go ahead and select it on the, the uh, text list on the right side there. And we're going to go ahead and say next for the time selection. So we're going to provide it a date, so it was October 3rd. Uh, the start time was 3 o'clock, so that's uh, in a 24-hour format, that would be 15 hours. Um, the duration time was, uh, let's see, 3 o'clock to 5, so that was 2 hours. And our interval is going to be 5 seconds. So uh, I see I've got a reminder here that's telling me to add time on um, to uh, adjust myself to, to UTC time. So I actually do need to do that because 15 was the local time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add 5 to that. And then I should uh, explain the interval. Uh, you, you could go up to one second. It's not going to hurt anything. The benefit isn't going to be uh, uh, recognizable in most cases. Um, you, you probably want to keep it right at five seconds. Any less than that, you might notice a little bit of a degradation in, in some of your uh, positional accuracy. But uh, really going any more than that isn't going to produce any kind of a recognizable benefit. So go ahead and click Next when you've got that set. Now we're at our summarization screen. Go ahead and give everything this uh, look over here. And uh, if it's acceptable, you can go ahead and click Next again. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just download the data. It's just one session for a couple hours. If I were doing, say, a week or, or uh, a long extent of data, I might want them to send me the data by email or, or download the data manually, but, but be notified uh, uh, by email when the data is generated. The format I'm also going to want is Rhinex 2.11. Once you've got that set, go ahead and generate uh, the data. This may uh, take a moment or two. 
When it's done generating the data, it's going to take you to this uh, 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 finish screen. And uh, you can just, just click on uh, next to go to the order details again. And uh, now you'll see there's a download button at the bottom. Go ahead and click that, and it's going to go ahead and offer you a prompt down here to download. I'm just going to save mine to the default uh, downloads directory that I use with Internet Explorer. Um, and then I'll just point to that location when I get into Pathfinder Office here. So let's go ahead and switch to Pathfinder Office. I've got this file open right now, and you can see that the uh, uh, point here is accurate to 23 inches. So I, I can tell it's not been post-processed yet. Um, let's go ahead and open up our differential correction wizard. All right, so that file is in there. I'm going to go ahead and say next here. Um, using a single base provider, uh, uh, that's, that's really the only method when you're using WISCOR's multiple base providers. Uh, could potentially work, but uh, the, um, being that the WISCOR's network is so dense, there, there wouldn't be any benefit at all to that. Uh, you're never going to be more than uh, very far away from a single base station. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept those defaults as well. All right, so now I have to browse to my order here. Uh, typically, you'd use this base provider search and pick the closest station. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and browse to our uh, recently downloaded file here, which is order underscore 34.zip. And I also want to make sure that, in this case, I'm using the reference position from base file. You could use a reference position from base provider and create the uh, uh, position in there. The Trimble software uh, for um, uh, standardization's sake likes the ITRF uh, 2000 EPIC 97 if you are going to use the reference position from a base provider. Um, but in this case, we're going to adopt the uh, uh, datum of the reference station, uh, which is uh, NAD 83. Uh, 2011, and that that's uh, uh, there's more information published by WISC cores on that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, next here, and uh, I'm going to accept my defaults and push start, and we'll go ahead and see that uh, we do have 100% coverage here. Um, it should look uh, pretty normal, except uh, it didn't actually have to download the the data in the first step there, so it, it skips over it quite quickly. Um, we'll let this go for just another moment here and take a look at our results when it's uh, done processing. Okay, 100% uh, processed at between 5 and 15 centimeters. That looks good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my processed file here just to take a look. Sure enough, when I look at this point, the horizontal precision was 3.9 inches. So uh, it came out, uh, came out quite nicely there. So if you have any questions, go ahead and contact us at the email here and we can help you out with it. Thanks.